Do you want to play copyrighted music on your Twitch stream, but you don't want to get in trouble or have your Twitch VOD muted after you end the stream? In today's video, I'll be teaching you how you can separate your copyrighted music from your Twitch stream VOD, so that way you can play whatever music you want without having your Twitch streams muted. If that sounds good to you, then drop a quick like on this video so other streamers can find this video. Then we'll take a quick second to appreciate the little Pikachu shirt, and let's jump into it. This will work for both OBS Studio and Streamlabs, but it's pretty much the exact same setup process. If you're wondering where I got this really cool over overlay from, I actually got it for free and you guys can too from today's sponsor. You can get it from Own Pro, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. But once you're on the site, all you simply have to do is click join for free or log in. After you've connected your Twitch account, you'll be brought to the dashboard, which you can find the scene builder on the top left side here. So we'll click that. We can then choose between complete setup or single scene. So I'm going to choose complete setup because it's easiest. Then we can choose automatic selection. And here you'll see hundreds of different overlays that you can choose between if you want to go to the premium, but they have five free options here that you can choose between completely free. And I have a whole video on this teaching you how to do it in the top right corner if you want to watch this after the video, but I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to check out some free overlays and alerts. So in order to play copyrighted music on Twitch without actually getting our VODs muted, we have to understand how our audio is routed. So I'm going to try and dumb everything down so even my grandma can understand. So by default, if you go into your settings, whether that be Streamlabs or OBS Studio, and we go to the audio tab, typically you're you're going to have it set up like this. You'll have your desktop audio, which is going to be pretty much all of your audio coming out of your computer. And then you'll have your microphone slash auxiliary audio, which is essentially just your microphone. So we're starting with two different audio tracks. We have the desktop audio, which is all of your computer audio, including game, music, whatever you're playing out of your computer and then you have your mic audio. So obviously if we wanna play music to Twitch but not have it in the actual video after we end the stream, we're gonna to have to separate our desktop audio into different audio sources so that way we can individually mute them and have more control. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit so we can see the audio mixer at the bottom because right now you see that when I'm talking I have my microphone and then we have our desktop audio which is all of our computer audio. So what we need to do to get started is simply go to the stream tab we want to make sure that our service is set to Twitch and we have our account connected because if we're not having Twitch as our main platform, we're not going to get the Twitch VOD audio track right here. And if you're still not seeing it, you need to make sure that your output mode up here is set to advanced. So we want to make sure stream is set to Twitch, account is connected, and then output is set to streaming and then output mode advanced and you'll see this Twitch VOD track. Now, if you're curious to do this for multi-streaming to YouTube or Kick, comment down below that you are interested in that. And if I get enough requests, I'll make a video covering how to do this for multi-streaming to Kick and YouTube as well. But for right now, we're gonna stick with Twitch to keep things easy. So when we're looking at the streaming settings, any audio that is set to audio track one is going to be sent to our Twitch stream, and that's going to be live. So essentially, we have six audio tracks here, and we can break that down even more if we simply hit OK, we're going to go into the audio mixer settings. So we'll click on these little wheels here. It's going to bring us to the advanced audio properties. And now you'll see all of our different audio sources. So we have that desktop audio, which is all of our computer audio. We have our microphone audio. Then we have this browser source overlay, which is the owned one that I showed you at the beginning of the video, which actually doesn't have any audio attached to it. So it doesn't really matter. But if we look at the desktop audio and the microphone audio and we go all the way to the right, we can see that there's actually six audio tracks being sent here. So that means that depending on how you have these set up will depend on what audio is being sent to what track. So under our stream settings, we establish that any audio track sent to track one is going to be sent to our live stream. So that means if we want our desktop audio, aka our computer audio and our microphone audio, then both of these will enabled on track one. But then you see something different gets set up here. So on track two, I only have my desktop audio, but no mic. And track three, I only have my microphone and not my computer because I have mine set up in a particular way. I want all of my audio to get sent to my live stream, but under the recording tab, I want to record on tracks two and three. So that way, when I'm locally recording, I'll have an audio track with just my computer audio, and then I'll have an audio track with just my microphone so I can adjust those levels better. And then I have everything sent to four, five, and six because I'm not actually using those. But let me show you what's actually going on under the hood. So we're sending everything live to one, and then just computer audio to two, and then just mic to three. So we're gonna close this, We'll go back to the settings. We'll go back to output and then we'll do a quick review. So audio track one, this is everything that's sent to our live stream. 
So audio track one, I had my desktop audio and I had my microphone. So everything's getting sent to the live stream. But if we go to the recording tab, this is where things get a little tricky. So I actually have mine set to two and three. So if I'm streaming and locally recording, the local recording is only having two audio tracks and that's audio track two and audio track three because on audio track two, we have just our computer audio and audio track three, we have just our microphone. So that way, when I drag it into a video editor like DaVinci Resolve, it's going to have the video file and then two audio tracks, one with just the computer audio and the other with just the microphone. And by the way, if you end up doing something like this and your audio tracks are not getting split, make sure that your video editing software actually allows you to do multiple audio tracks because certain things like I believe CapCut possibly doesn't allow you to do that. I could be wrong, but if you're running into that issue where you're only getting one audio track, try using something like DaVinci Resolve. It's completely free. I'm not sponsored by them, but that's what I use to edit all my videos. So we're recording locally on two and three. So I have my audio track split if I wanna do that, but you don't have to do that at all. Like if you're just streaming, ignore this recording part. And then audio track one for our live stream is our computer audio and then our mic audio. So now this is where the Twitch VOD track comes into play. So if we enable the Twitch VOD track, then anything, let's go with number six because it's the furthest out there. Anything that's sent to audio track six is what's going to stay in your Twitch VOD track after you end the stream. So once you end the stream, anything that's on six will be the audio tracks for it. So let's dive deeper into that. So if we hit apply and then okay, we're gonna go back to the audio mixer advanced settings here. And now we can look at it. Over here, we have our desktop and mic. These are both getting sent to one, so that's fine. Now, if we go all the way to six, it's the same thing. So if we didn't wanna have our computer audio in the actual past broadcast audio, we would simply remove it from track six. That way, the computer audio is getting sent to the live stream but when the stream ends, they're not gonna have that computer audio. But obviously that now creates a problem because that's capturing all of our computer audio. So what we need to do now is split up our computer audio into different segments. So that way we can choose to have our game volume in the past broadcast, but the music not in the past broadcast. So how do we do that? It's actually not too hard, but it does require a couple extra steps. So what we'll do is simply hit close, and now let me bring up a game so we can actually see what's going on here. So as you can see now, I booted up a game in the background and you can see that my desktop audio is dancing because it's picking up that game audio. So what we'll be doing is we'll be adding a new source and we'll be taking advantage of the application audio capture beta. This is the same exact process for Streamlabs as well. Pretty much everything is one-to-one -one, by the way. But specifically for our game, what we can do is go into the game capture and choose that and then we'll hit okay because they actually have an option to do it automatically. So what we can do is capture any full screen application if that works for you. For this game in particular, I don't know if that's gonna work. So we can actually go into capture specific window, go into window and then find the game, which is golf with your friends. And it should pop up in just a second right there. But now we can enable that capture audio beta and it's gonna automatically add that new audio source. So as you can see, if I uncheck it, it's just the two, but if I check it, it's gonna add that audio source now. Now keep in mind, if you're playing different games and you're using this capture specific window option, you might need to go and change the window to the new game that you're playing. But if you're using the full screen application option, it should capture pretty much everything. So just a heads up for you if that happens to be in your case. So now that we have our game capture up and we have the audio capture set up as well, we can hit okay. I'm actually gonna make this smaller. There, that looks a little better. So now you can see we actually have doubled audio because we have the game capture audio and now the computer audio. So we don't want that. So honestly, an easy fix is to simply just mute your desktop audio and that way you don't have to worry about it. And if it's really bothering you now, you can still hit these three dots and then hit hide. And now it's like, it's not even there. But if you wanted to get it back, just hit these three little dots and then hit unhide all and it'll come right back. But now you probably discovered that, hey, now that we've muted our computer audio, 
Now we have to individually tell OBS or Streamlabs what audio we want to be on our stream. Because right now, if I play music through my computer, it's not gonna get picked up because I haven't created that audio capture source for it yet. I've only told it to capture the game audio right now. So if you're a smart individual, you'll download a program like Spotify or YouTube Music or whatever kind of software to run your music or Windows Media Player, I don't care what you guys use. And it would literally be as simple as going to add a new source and then application audio capture beta. And then let's just say you wanna call it Spotify then hit OK. And then you would simply just choose the window that says Spotify or whatever you're playing your music out of. However, for a lazy SOB such as myself, and I don't want to download stuff, I usually play music through my Google Chrome tab, like Spotify, YouTube Music, whatever, but through the Chrome tab, so I don't have to download anything. So if that's the case, I'll show you how to do that. So I pulled up a Google Chrome tab, which honestly, I use this all the time. It's called NSC or No Copyright Sounds. And it's kind of ironic that we're playing no copyright music in a copyright music video. But I'll I'll also leave this linked in the description because it's 100% free, not sponsored, but I just like the music. It doesn't suck. But let's just say that you want to play music through your Chrome browser like I'm doing now. So I'm going to play some music. I'll just play this random one. And just so you know, we have the music running through our Chrome tab. So let's go back into OBS. Right now it's not popping up in here. So what I need to do is hit cancel and I'm going to double click on it again to refresh it. And we'll now search for the window. It should be right here web player Google Chrome. So as soon as I hit that, you're gonna see right here under Spotify, I hit okay, that I'm getting audio through my Google Chrome window. Now keep in mind, if you're doing it lazy like this way, any other audio that you play through your Google Chrome window will come through this audio source. So if you're watching some things you shouldn't be watching in that same Google Chrome window, Stream's gonna hear it. That's why I recommend downloading like the desktop for Spotify or YouTube or whatever the heck it is to play your music. So that way you don't have any oopsies like that. But if you're lazy like me, you can totally just do this. And essentially you would just rinse and repeat the process to get any kind of audio source that you want. So if you wanted to get your Discord audio, then all you would do is add a new source, application audio capture beta, we'll call it Discord, hit okay. And then you would find Discord in this window and then that's all you would have to do. And then you'd hit okay and it would add a new audio source. So once you've told OBS, Streamlabs or whatever, all of the different audio sources that you wanna capture, then you'll add them there like we just did. And then simply what you would do now is go into the advanced audio properties and then you'll see all of our new audio sources here and we're gonna tell all of them what tracks they should be on. So for example, if we remember how I have this set up, anything on audio track one is going live to our stream. So pretty much everything. And then audio tracks two and three for my specific setup, I have track two just for like the game audio and then track three just for the mic audio to split it. So that means if you wanted to have your Discord audio on another track, we could go and actually take Discord off of two and three and put it on four and then go into our settings for let's say, what is it? Output recording. Then we can audio track four, five as well. So that way you can have your local recording set to four audio tracks. So let's say two is the game audio, three is the mic, four is Discord and five is music or whatever. So that way you have four different audio tracks here, then you'd hit apply, and then we set it up as such. So then we go back into the advanced audio properties, and then we would tell Discord only goes on one, four, and then six, because six is our past broadcast VOD track audio. So one is streaming, two is just going to be, let's say the game audio, so game capture right there. Then we'll take it off of three, four, and five, but we'll leave it on six because we want our game audio to be in the past broadcast. Then we go to the mic option. We want it sent to our live stream. We don't want it on our game audio. We have it on three for our own mic audio by itself. And then four and five, we don't want it on because that's gonna be discord and music or whatever. And then six, we want our microphone in our past broadcast. And then overlay doesn't matter because there's no audio coming out of it. But if you wanted to, you could just uncheck it all for pretty much any source that you know is not gonna have any any audio and then Spotify the important one this is the music one that we have set up we want the music sent to our live stream we don't want it sent over our game audio we don't want it set over our mic audio we don't want it sent over our discord audio we want it on its own track here for the recording and then we don't 
want it on our past broadcast VOD track audio. So now, if we look at everything, every audio source is set to live track one because that's our live stream. But then on track six, this is the VOD track audio. So basically we have everything that we want on the VOD track and no music. So that means when we stream next, they'll hear it while we're streaming, but as soon as we end that stream, they're not going to hear it in the past broadcast, which will avoid getting your VOD muted and getting hit with a potential copyright strike. But watch this video to the side of me. I show you how to make your microphone sound even better. So give it a quick watch. My name's Cody, and I'll see you in the next one.